So I found myself making a lot of brutalist work recently and I know that you guys love it and it's got some really good reception on my channel. So I wanna walk through a few more poster designs like that. Now I've done one recently called Mania. So we're gonna be walking through that from start to finish today. It's got these really gritty grunge textures as well that everyone knows and loves. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and walk through it. So firstly, I'm just gonna show you the original design so you know what we're aiming towards in this. So you can see I've got this really standout bold typography here just as a title with mania and then we've got these small structured red subtext over the top that's kind of scraping readable but it's all lining up with this kind of black red and white color scheme as well as this we've got these halftone effects that are kind of like limited halftone effects they don't directly look like it and then we've got these different kind of line structure here on the teeth and on the eyes now i'm going to be showing you all of these steps and obviously this is all topped off with this kind of scratch texture and these grunge assets so let's jump into a new canvas so 3840 4800 pixels, 300 resolution, standard in all of my poster work. So get to know these dimensions. As long as it's in Instagram scale, you could do 4000 by 5000, doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna set the background to black to start with, and then I'm gonna reset my colors here by pressing D. The first step with a lot of brutalist designs is you want some sort of structure. You wanna shape everything into a grid and have it all aligned and organized. So I'm gonna be doing view, guides, new guide layout. Now this is already saved from where I've worked on this previously, but this is the structure I've been using for this. This is pretty much a standard in a lot of brutalist design work I make. I wish I'd emphasize that grids are not there to limit you, they're there solely as a guide. You don't need to stick to them so strictly. So you can be quite flowy with this. You can just add in kind of whatever values you like, but I'm gonna be using five columns, seven rows, 50 pixel gutter and margin. Now it's got this really fine structure already. I like having the gutter and the margin the same size as I think it works better with grid layouts. And now the first step I'm gonna be doing is bringing the image in. Okay, so just pasting in the image here. This is sourced from Unsplash and I will link the photo in the description below if you'd like to use it for yourself. But I was mainly looking for something bold and expressive. It's got a lot of emotion in it, almost kind of a little bit of eeriness to it because we're gonna be using this red kind of like a horror color. So I've just brought up my grid lines here. So now my idea for this was to have the eyes in kind of one section across the top and then have the mouth along the bottom. And these are gonna be chopped up with text in the center. So I wanna kind of place it in a point where I've got this, these two rows in the center are kind of clear of any key details. So with the eyes being the main focus grid wise, this is kind of working on placement. And I'm seeing the mouth is a little bit more on the right hand side. So I may add a little tilt to this. And I can just briefly shift around and play around with this composition. For the moment, I'm gonna stick with this. I think this is quite good. So you can see we've got the mouth covering in these three rows and we've got the eyes in these top two. So now to go about masking this, you can just use the marquee tool, but I'm gonna use the rectangle tool because I wanna curve the edges of it. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool on my toolbar and I'm gonna shape this in. So now with this, you can click and drag in these corners, but there's also the type box here. So I'm just gonna type in 50 pixels. And then with this chain links, it's gonna apply it to all of the corners. And there we go. So now if I come off, you're gonna see this. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a stronger curve here. So let me put it on 100. And there we go, it's a bit more like it. Now I'm just gonna repeat this. I'm gonna use a rectangle tool and do these top two rows. And now with both of these highlighted, just gonna use command click on this rectangle and then command and hold shift as well to select the other one. So we've got both of these outlines selected in the same selection. Now I come back onto this image layer and just simply hit mask. Now straight away, you can see the composition coming together and what I'm kind of aiming for here. So now at this point, I can just remove these rectangles. Now with these brutalist effects, we want some kind of like detail within the image that brings out all of the depth. So for this, I use noise overlays and this works very well with filter gallery and threshold effects. So to create a noise overlay layer, we're gonna be doing it the right way. So we're gonna come down to adjustments and solid color, and then we're gonna type in the hex code 808080. Now the reason I do this is because it is a solid 50% gray. So it's gonna to apply to most of the color tones in the image. So it's gonna be a bit more of an even spread. And now with this layer made, I'm gonna turn this into a smart object. And then I'm gonna come up to filter, camera raw filter, and then put my grain up. And now when we're using these kind of like threshold and filter gallery effects, using a larger size often works a lot better because it brings out a bit more detail. So I'm gonna go for 100 size here and 100 roughness. That's gonna be a very harsh and large grain, but this is fine for the moment. And I'm gonna change this layer mode to overlay. And now that is gonna be the right way to add a noise layer rather than just selecting filter and noise because it kind of brings out a few different colors and it doesn't look as good and high detailed. So we're gonna stick with this. And obviously this is a live layer as well. Now from here, I can simply just duplicate it to increase the grain value. And we're gonna do that in this case. Now I want to work on adding the effects on the image. So I'm gonna come back onto this image layer gonna come up to filter and filter gallery. Now you're gonna see I've got these previews already set here, so I'm just gonna remove these and show you. So the first filter we're gonna be adding is halftone pattern. Now you're gonna find this in the sketch tab. And now initially when you look at it, you think, okay, it's very minimal. It's not really bringing out too much detail, but if we play around with the settings here, we can get a few cool options from this. So the first pattern type I want is line. Now this is great for creating these kind of scan line effects and you can see why straight away. It creates these horizontal lines and 
brings out a lot of good contrast. So because we're going to be adding multiple of these, don't worry about this kind of preview too much. I'm going to bring this size down a bit. I'm just going to say to five. Then I'm going to increase the contrast, put the contrast around 12 here. And now simply from this point, you've got this plus icon down here to duplicate one. So we're going to do this and then come on to the pattern type and we're going to set this one on dot. And then when we've got both of these applied, you can see the kind of effect that it's creating here. It's not quite just a simple half tone dot pattern. You can see it's almost like squares. But if I was to hide the bottom one and we have just dots, this looks a bit more like a standard. But if you link these both together, it's a little bit more abstract and I like the look of it a lot here. And that's what we're going to be using. And now on top of this, I'm going to also add a grain overlay just to kind of enhance that noise even more. So just add a plus down here and I'll come down to texture and grain. Now, I think these settings already are quite good for me, just 40 and 50. You can change the grain type here if you wanted to play around with different modes, but I'm going to keep it on soft. I'm going to keep it on regular, sorry. And I'm going to hit OK when I'm all done. Now to start with, this is going to look a bit large and layery. You know, this almost looks like it's lost a lot of detail, but once we add the gradient map in, it's going to really create that contrast. So I'm just going to hide all of these features here. And then above these noise layers, we're going to come down to adjustments and add in a gradient map. Now, if we just take a quick preview back at the original, you see we've got this harsh red and black gradient. So that's what we're going to be adding in here. So select this bar and I'm going to select this preset here. Now it's simply black on one end. I've just gone for solid black or just off of solid black here. And I'll add in a vibrant red and just bring them in to around, let's say we've got 35 on location here and 62 here. I'm going to make them even. Now you can play around with that balance there. You can drag these in and out. I'm going to maybe set this around 70. And straight away, it kind of corrects that contrast and it gives this almost distressed type look which is exactly what we're going for in this style of poster design. So it works really well. Okay, now with this image kind of corrected for the meantime, we're gonna work on the title and then we can come back to these kind of, you know, adding in the white eyes and correcting on the teeth as well. So for the title, there was a post I released about five typefaces to use in the in the uh, the new year. And one of them is called Bigger Display. And now this is amazing because it's just ideally what you're looking for in this kind of like sans serif bold typefaces. It's amazing for headlines and I use it in so much of my work now and I definitely recommend it. Now it's a free typeface as well, which is even better. And then from this point, I'm just gonna type in Mania, which is my title, make sure this is set to optical. And then I just wanted to increase the tracking a bit here as I felt that when it was on zero, it's a little bit too clamped together. So I'm just gonna size this until this fits within the grid lines. I'm just gonna play around with that until that's just perfect there. And there we go. That's what kind of works really well about having the gutter size and the margin size the same. So now we've got this kind of consistency the whole way through the image in spacing and composition. So with this, I didn't want it as a solid white. You can see if I was to move it under the gradient map, it's going to apply this red color, which we don't want. So I'm going to keep it outside of that for the time being. And now to move on to these kind of text effects, I'm not going to apply them di directly to the text layer. I'm going to apply them to a group so that they're a little bit more live and editable. So use Command G to group that. I'm just going to name this Mania. And now we're going to add this kind of ink bleedy, kind of distress look around the edges. So let me come onto this filter here and we're going to go on color overlay to start with. Now this is already preset to what I have it in the original. I'm going to show you why I've selected this here. It's kind of coming in from the solid white into a bit more of like creamy and it's really good for this kind of off white and off black color. Great when you're using duotone work. So I'm going to settle it around here and then I'm going to, for safe keeps, I'm going to copy this hex code just when I come back to use it. So I'm going to see I've got a whole bunch of drop shadow presets. I'm just going to remove these and add them in one by one to show you. So on this effects panel, select that, come down to drop shadow. Now you're going to see these presets are already on here. This is most likely the standard. If I just go and reset to default, yeah, this is the default setting. So I'm going to set my blend mode to normal. And I'm going to set the color once I've pasted this in to the same as the text color. Now you're going to see why. With this opacity, I'm going to bring this up to 100, set the distance to zero and set the size to two. Now you're not really going to notice this at all to start with. But if I hide it, even then, you're not going to notice it. It's very, very faint. But with this setting now, with this two pixel, I'm going to press this plus to duplicate it, make this one four. And if you keep duplicating it and doubling it, it's going to slowly spread a little bit wider and it's going to bring out this really nice ink bleed effect and obviously the more increase and increase it gets it's going to be a lot stronger and it's going to get stronger way quicker so when i get to about 64 you're going to notice how much of a glow this is so i'm just going to remove so now once you've got all of these applied you can kind of shape out which ones you want to keep visible and which ones you want to hide so i'm obviously going to hide the top one because it's a little bit too layery maybe hide the third and you can kind of play around with this now i'm quite happy with this it's almost a bit more of a faint glow, but it's still quite visible that it's there. And then I'm going to select OK. Now it's great that obviously this is still live and it applies. So it's a great way of using groups to structure your layers and effects. OK, now for the time being, this is good just with our text structured in. And now I'm just going to come back onto the image altering. So we're going to add in this eye color and this teeth correction as well. So I'm simply just going to duplicate our image layer here and I'm going to drag it above I mean, below this mania text. And now you're going to see it's still got the filter applied, but because it's got no gradient map. Now, the first step we're going to do is mask it. So 
We've already got the base mask on here, so I'm gonna simply remove this. Now, what I wanna highlight is this eye section. So I'm gonna also hide the filter gallery for the time being, just so I can get this masking really accurate. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool for this kind of shape, and I'm gonna try and make it as accurate as I can around this eyelid. Now, I haven't spent too long on this for the sake of the video, but obviously the smoother you get this, the more realistic the effect is gonna look. So do take some time trying to correct this. Now, if you're not too familiar with using the pen tool, for example, if I come to a straight point, but I don't wanna keep these anchor points in, I'm still holding down my click here. If I hold option, I can drag this in and then I can make a little bit of a sharper edge there, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of just a, a little tip to use when you're using the pen tool. I remember when I discovered it, completely changed my life of using the pen tool. I always found it really difficult to use. Now I've got this shadow here, I'm just gonna kind of curve in. Now for example, it works really well in this end point, so drag that out, you can structure that. And then another helpful tip is if you have your pen tool uh, active, hold option and you can completely restructure the anchor points from here. But that's good for one eye. So I'm just gonna make selection on this and I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna fill this for the time being. Now I'll come back onto my image, repeat the same step on this eye. Now I'm gonna make right click, make selection on that. Now also I'm just gonna fill it in on this layer. Now I'm simply just filling it on in this layer so that I can use the outlines by command clicking it. So I'm gonna command click this, hide that, and then on this new duplicate mask of the image we have, we're gonna select mask here. Now this is simply just gonna isolate the eyes. Immediately you're gonna notice that there's no effects on this, so it's looking very odd. So what we're gonna do is just uh, reveal this filter gallery back again. Now this is looking closer, but we're noticing that we've still got this dotted effect, whereas for contrast, I've changed it to a line effect. So what we're gonna do is come back into our filter gallery here, select the halftone pattern option you have here where the pattern type is on dot, and we're gonna swap this to line, not line, sorry, we're gonna swap this to circle. So with circle selected here, I'm now also gonna apply this to the other halftone pattern. And then once these are both on circle and I zoom out, it's gonna create these kind of bent scan lines the whole way around in the shape of this circle we have in the center here. So now I'm gonna select okay on this. And there we go, we've got this lines. And I think it works really well because you know, you can see them bending into the same kind of arch here. Now what I'm also gonna do for a little bit of blending is I'm gonna come onto layer modes on this duplicate layer and I'm gonna select dissolve. Now this is gonna be really faint, but you can see as I undo it and redo it, it creates these kind of uh, a little bit more of jagged edges so it blends a little bit better. And now I'm gonna grab the brush and just play around with my black brush. And I'm gonna, you see as I drag this in, it's kind of like stippled. So it works really well with kind of blending it in with original images. And I'm just gonna brush lightly around these edges. That's gonna make a very faint difference, but all of these little details really help. I'm just gonna do the same thing around the top and then just repeat the same step on the other eye. There we go, as I zoom out, this effects, you know, it's coming together really well. We also need to structure these teeth. Now, in the original, I didn't add this. And when I was playing around with it again, I thought that would, you know, when I looked at it after a day or so, I thought the teeth should also be white just for composition as well. So to simply correct that, we're gonna grab our mask that we're already using and I'm not gonna do any masking with a pencil here. I'm simply just gonna brush out. Now this may not be as accurate, but I kind of only want to reveal these red areas of the teeth. I don't wanna draw out the whole mouth and you're gonna see why. If I select this mask and kind of start doing that, you're gonna see these circles in the middle of the mouth as well. And I think that didn't really work too well. So I'm just gonna get a smaller brush, start brushing out these teeth. There we go, I think the bottom teeth are done for that. And I think keeping the red kind of in the tongue area works well as well, kind of fits with the theme. And now these white areas I see, I'm just gonna brush out again. And once again, not gonna make this too accurate for the sake of the video and time, but in your own work, you do wanna try and keep these really delicate and bring out all of these fine details. There we go for the time being, I think that's quite good. Now as we zoom out, you know, this composition is really coming together now and the, uh, the contrast between the red and the white works really well. And now you'll notice I haven't also added a gradient map to this layer, which is what we're gonna do now. Now I'm gonna slightly correct this. Now the reason I do this is because this kind of off-white color we have on the text is not applied to the eyes, that is simply just white. So I'm just gonna duplicate this gradient map layer and paste it above just here. Command option G to clip it to the layer below. And I'm gonna open this up and on this white value here, I mean on this red value here, I'm gonna double click on it, Command V to paste in my hex code. Now you're gonna see as I hide and reveal this, it's gonna make it better in terms of contrast make it match the rest of the image. And it's also gonna make it slightly more of an off-white to match this main text color. Just for consistency, it works really well. So I'm gonna name this white, name this red, eyes and mouth, and then group these noise layers, just name it noise. Okay, now as we come back onto the original, we've got these kind of red power graph text that are aligned over the image. So I'm just gonna paste these in here without the effects applied. Now I'm gonna show you my thinking behind this as well as the placement. Now I wanted this red overlay text as I think it kind of this kind of has a horror feel to it, you know, with the color scheme and the really expressive face. I've used ChatGPT to develop a kind of an abstract storyline that kind of applies to this image. And I'm using it more as a decorative feature rather than because I want you to read it. So that's why it's quite small. I think it kind of looks like, it, to me, it represents like a blood splat or a stain over the text, you know, the main image. And it gives it more of a maximal feel that kind of, you know, fits in with the whole theme of Mania. 
So I've just pasted in these paragraphs here, as you can see, just brought them in, in their own text boxes, and then I've dragged them along from left to right, and I've placed them based on contrast. So from this point, you know, you can read it quite well. And what I've tried to do is place them over areas of white, but also make it not fit within the grid lines because it's gonna represent the theme a little bit better. So just play around with this. This is, you know, not too strict. You can just drag them around, bring them in and out, place them where you think works, you know. For me, this was the outline that I've selected. So I'm gonna go with this. And I've put these all into the same folder. As I mentioned earlier, we wanna apply these drop shadow effects to them. So to save some time, we're gonna right click on our Mania folder and copy the style. Now we're gonna paste this style. Immediately you're gonna see that it's white. Simply we can go in and change that. Select the color overlay and I'll just drop an eyedropper over the red tone we've got. And now whenever I'm editing colors, I always save the hex code because you know, it's so much easier to paste it in than use the eyedropper again. It saves you a little bit of time. And come onto these drop shadow layers, just paste in the color. Now it's gonna apply this the way we're looking for here. Now these values are slightly different, remember, because we used larger text. So I'm gonna hide this large one and I think I'm gonna stick it where it is for now. I might even hide this four, add it onto one slightly bigger and then turn the opacity down to about 50. And there we go, that's about what I'm looking for here, which is good. Drag that one up. From this point with the effects, you can play around with the placement again. I'm happy where they are for the moment. Now the final asset we're gonna add is just some color splats. Now I've got this kind of like a paint splat brush pack, which I've been using for a few, few years now. Now, unfortunately, I cannot remember where I got it from, so I'm not gonna be able to source it, but I'm sure you can find a lot of these online and it's just a preset pack that looks like paint splats. It's amazing for, you know, these kind of like horror-esque kind of shoots. It looks a lot like blood splats when you use it, which is what I'm gonna aim for here. So I'm gonna set my foreground color to red. So either eye drop, paste in the hex code. I'm gonna make this really small here. And every time you click, it's randomized. So it's gonna be something different every time. You can click and drag, makes it really dense though. So I'm not gonna be using that. Now on this layer, I wanna add in a few different colors. So I'm gonna add in some red, which is gonna be the primary. I'm just gonna click and dot these across the main text. Might make it a little bit bigger in the corners, maybe even the mouth uh, over the mouth as well, you know, to really make this look visibly manic. And I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna make sure that we've got our kind of white text here, make it smaller again, kind of paste it over the darker areas. Again, nothing too strict. Now we're also gonna add in the black as well. This is just for contrast, especially works really well over the text. And then I'm happy with this placement for the time being. Now with these, obviously just use Command and Z to undo and redo. If you're not happy with areas, you can also just get your eraser tool, just brush them out. It's really simple to work with. So I'm just gonna rename this layer to splats and now we can just move on to the final texture. Okay, so I'm gonna paste in the first texture here, which is a photocopy texture. Now this is from Texture Fabric, it's a free file. So if you were to Google Texture Fabric photocopy, loads come up on images and you can just download them straight from there. It's really good to use. So I'm just gonna center this and I'm gonna set this layer mode to screen. Screen's always gonna be my go-to layer mode for the first texture layer I use, especially when it's primarily darker colors. And now from this point, I'm gonna drop the opacity down to about 60. But the problem is, is because it's so gray, you know, it's around a mid-tone gray, it's really light. So I'm gonna use levels to adjust this using Command L. And now from here, you know, we've got the, uh, the shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights. I'm gonna drag in the shadows and I'm gonna drag the mid-tones towards it for a bit of contrast. So just keep dragging that down until I'm happy. Now as I zoom in, we've got some good balance going on here. Now I'm gonna add in our second texture here, which is the primary one. Now this is this scratch texture that you're gonna see on a few pieces of my work. Now this is from Design Syndrome, so I'll link this in the description. Really good PNG texture. I'm gonna bring the opacity down to about 60. And because you've got a lot of transparency here, you don't really need to set a layer mode. I'm just gonna use levels again, just to adjust the balance here, make it a little bit less gray. So I'm gonna drag in those low ends and you can play around with these sliders here for contrast. You can say about that's good for me. And then just to bring these details all out a bit further, we're gonna come back to one of our noise layers from the bottom. I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna shift this to the top. Now I'm gonna go in this because as you remember, we used quite a large size. So I'm gonna bring this size down to about 20. Hit okay here. And now if I hide and reveal this, it's just gonna bring out some just fine details. Really good for these grunge and Bruce Lee style posters. From this point, this is effectively the final piece. We're just gonna add in one more levels layer just to adjust it all. I'm gonna bring this beneath the textures and then play around with this slider here just to get the color balance right. So you can see as I bring the midtones in, if you look at the edges of the text, it kind of makes it a bit more of a glow. Now for me, this is great on contrast and it kind of does the distress look for you because it's trying to contrast against all of these texture overlays, which is great. So I'm gonna keep this uh, low ends slightly in to make it less gray, as you can see from the standard. Drag this in a bit, bring the midtones in slightly, and even the high values I can bring up just to bring up the contrast in this text and the eyes and mouth. I think that's pretty balanced here, and I'm happy with this as the final piece, and that's all done. Now, as always, I really appreciate you making it to the very end, and I hope you can find these videos useful or you learn something about me or my own design process that you can apply to yours. 
Now, YouTube's gonna recommend you another video just here that it thinks you need to see. So go ahead and watch that and you might learn something else. So I'll see you over there.